Amen. So I'm going to start off with a question. This isn't a raise your hands kind of thing. I don't want to do that. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But I want to ask the question, if you're honest with yourself, who in the room or watching online would say they're still a little bit afraid of the dark? I would put myself in that category. I never think I'm afraid of the dark until I'm in the dark. And then I'm like, I am afraid of the dark a little bit. And, and, and I was laughing because I am never faster than when I have to turn off the light in the living room at night. And then there are no other lights on and I've got to get to my bedroom. That's the fastest I ever, like my kids could be falling off a cliff and I will be slower than I am when I'm in the dark and I've got to run to wherever the closest light is. Or there's times where I'm outside at night and I'm like taking out the trash or something and I've got this motion detector light that's on the front of my house. But for whatever reason, sometimes it just likes to take its time. You know, it just takes a little bit longer than I would like. And every single shadow out there is a guy with a knife ready to just kill me. You know what I mean? And I know it. And so you're like looking over your shoulder and you're like trying to be all, and then when the light comes on, it's everything's, everything's okay. And I, you know, those are silly stories, but we're going to talk a lot about today, darkness. We're talking about what darkness is. Because Jesus does come, he says, I am the light of the world. But what that means is that that light's pushing up against something. And we're talking about the reality of the darkness that every single one of us walk in. We're talking about what the darkness means, that it's kind of a scary thing. And there's lots of stuff that happens in the darkness, lots of lies that the darkness will make us believe. And so we've got to talk about that. So I'm going to give everybody the warning right here up front. There are going to be two moments in this message where we are going to turn off all the lights in the room and we're going to make it completely pitch black dark. Like the screens will go off. We're going to have a blanket that goes over the door, the stage lights, the house lights, it's all going to go off two different times. And we're going to use that as an illustration. We practiced it this week. It's very dark in here when that happens. So I'm telling you up front because if that's not your thing, that's 100% fine. And you can, uh, you can hear the message out in the foyer if you wanted to step out during that moment. You'll know when it's coming. I'll give plenty of uh, introduction to it. We also have the prayer room back here that has some light in it if you wanted to go in there. So we're gonna do that moment. There's gonna be two moments where all the lights go off. Here's my only ask. Don't find out you're afraid of the dark after it's dark, okay? Because <laughs> I don't want people tripping over people. So if you think maybe, I'd lean into that feeling. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but anyway, we're going to have a couple moments where we do turn off all the lights. So just, you'll, you'll know when they're coming, but just to say it in case that's not your thing. There's a, multiple people I've talked to this week that were just like, yeah, I'm going to leave when that happens. So no problem. All right. We're going to pick up the story this morning in John chapter eight. Um, Jesus has been teaching and doing all the wonderful things that Jesus does. And we're going to pick up in a moment where Jesus is speaking to some people. This is John chapter eight, verse 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. I am the light of the world. This is going to be where we focus Almost all of our time today is on this verse and this idea, I am the light of the world. And so I want to give us just a little bit of a roadmap right now, all the different kind of pieces that we're going to dive into this morning. The first thing to notice that we're going to talk, talk about and spend some time with is Jesus says, whoever follows him will not have to walk in darkness. I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not have to walk in darkness. And so there's, there's a clue for us in that, that that means there is darkness, like there's like a choice that Jesus kind of throws out. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in that darkness that exists. So the first thing we are going to talk about, you know, quite a lot today is that there is darkness. That's a reality that all of us walk in. Darkness is not just something that kind of pops up here and there, but it's always around. And we're going to talk about why that is. But one of the foundational um, elements of scripture, one of the things that comes up over and over again is that all of us are on this level playing field in our life. There's verses like all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Or in Romans 3, it says, no one is good, not even one. And it places everybody on this same level because I think we can start to believe the lie sometimes that I'm not that bad or I'm better than that or my life looks pretty good. And we start to have these thoughts and have these things that kind of pop up in our life that we believe, but there's this reality of darkness that's actually really important for us to know that it is dark. 
And there's always some darkness in our life. And we're gonna talk about that quite a bit this morning, that we're all in that same boat together. The second thing that we are gonna focus on a lot, Jesus says, whoever follows me will not have to walk in darkness, but will have the light that leads to life. So he says, whoever follows me will have the light that leads to life. And this is, again, is a theme of Jesus. When he's doing his ministry and he's showing people what to do and how to live, people will ask him, what do we have to do to do that? Like, what, what, what do I have to do? And always his response is like, just follow me. There's not some list of things he's gonna tell you, do this, this, and this, and then you'll have the light that leads to life. But he says, follow me. Jesus is always about relationship. Just come be close, come learn from me, come watch how I do it, spend time with me. That's how this is gonna work. So I'm not gonna give some list of do this, this, and this, or if you'll follow these you know, list of rules or whatever, then this is gonna happen, but come follow me. If you follow me, you will have the light that leads to life. Jesus is so relational. He's saying, be with me, listen to me, watch what I do. When you follow, you have him. That's a phrase that I read this week that I found really powerful that I've been kind of chewing on every single day. This pastor talked about this verse. He's saying what Jesus promises is, if you follow me, you'll have me. If you follow me, you'll have me. He says, I'm the light of the world. If you follow, you will have that light. It's about relationship. Be close to Jesus. But the first thing that we're gonna dive into is just the simple phrase that Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. What does that light mean? We're gonna talk about that because in the group of people that Jesus is talking to, there's Pharisees and they don't like that Jesus says this and they get very upset with him when he says that he is the light of the world. So we're gonna pick up the story here in John 8, verse 13. The Pharisees replied, you are making those claims about yourself. Such testimony is not valid. So my translation of this would be, they stand up and they go, liar. And they get upset with Jesus for what he said. And I always try to enter in with my imagination to these moments in scripture. Like this is an awkward moment. So imagine we're in this setting and I'm doing this and I'm preaching and one of you just stands up and yells liar in the middle of the thing. You'd be like, oh, dang, you know, you know, what's Jesus going to do? And I'm like, I'm the person, I'll be honest with you, like, Awkward situations in public, I can't do it, dude. I cannot. When things are weird, I'm like, there's nowhere to look at all. And I need to look anywhere I possibly can other than at who just said whatever. I'm the person that, like I'll be at a restaurant and I'll order a cheeseburger, but no onions, no pickles. If they bring me a plate of onions and pickles, I'll say, thank you so much. And I will eat it and I will not say a word because I cannot handle having to say something and make it awkward because I just, I'm just not wired that way. But um, I have my wife who does it for me. So (laughs) thanks, babe. But this is an awkward moment where they kind of stand up and they challenge Jesus in this moment. They call him a liar. That's not true. You're saying that about yourself. It's not valid. But Jesus being so much better in these situations than I am is not uh, thrown off by this. And so he responds, John 8, chapter 14, Jesus told them, these claims are valid, even though I make them about myself. For I know where I came from and where I'm going, but you don't know this about me. This is a super cool moment that we're gonna geek out on for a few minutes that I love. Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. And the reason I can say that, the reason it's true is I know where I came from and I know where I'm going. He says, you don't know this about me, but I know this. And the reason that I can say it and it's true that I'm the light of the world is I know where I came from and where I'm going. So we're gonna go back to Genesis for a moment. We're gonna look at Genesis chapter one. Uh, verse one and two together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So here's a picture at the very beginning of our Bible about what's happening, that there is darkness. It's empty, it's void, it's formless. This is a picture for us of what darkness is. There's nothing and it's, it's formless and empty and there's nothing to it. It's just darkness. And so then we're gonna pick up the story. This is the, like the classic, you know, beginning of the Bible verse, Genesis 1, verse three. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. Let there be light and there was light. And this light comes into the world and all that was dark starts to get lit up and starts to get pushed back. And where there was chaos and emptiness, God brings order and he starts to fill with this light. 
The other thing that's cool about this light is it's not the sun. God creates the sun a few days later, which I find fascinating. This is a different light. This light that's lighting up everything and forming and bringing order and filling the darkness is not the sun, it's something else. This light is something else, but God speaks, let there be light and there was light and it fills the darkness. It fills what was empty. It orders what was chaotic. And then at the beginning of John's gospel, he, he starts off, all the other gospels give like a, maybe like a genealogy of Jesus or talk about his birth. But John starts his gospel by saying, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. This is very different opening. And then he continues, he says, the word then became flesh and dwelt among us. And he's talking about Jesus, that Jesus is the word from the beginning. Amen. And Jesus, when he's walking around, he says stuff like, I don't say anything unless the father wants me to say it and then I'll say it. And I don't do anything unless the father wants me to do it and then I'll do it. That Jesus is the word. He is what, you know, God speaks and Jesus does. And there's a cool moment where Jesus is saying here, I think the, the clue that we're, we're putting together, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And the reason I can say that is I was there. When God spoke, let there be light, I was the light. Amen. I'm what's filling the darkness. And I can say I'm the light of the world because I always have been. I was involved. I was there. I am the light of the world that is filling that darkness. So Jesus can say I'm the light of the world because he always has been the light of the world from the very beginning. And then he says, you know, I, he says, I know where I came from and I know where I'm going. So now we're going to jump to Revelation, the other end of our Bible, Revelation chapter 21, verse 23. And the city has no need of sun or moon for the glory of God illuminates the city and the lamb is its light. This is a picture of what's going to happen after all of this is over, new heavens and new earth, the beauty that God is going to create. And it says that we won't even need the sun anymore because the lamb who is Jesus will be the light. He will be the only light that we need. Jesus himself will light up everything. We won't even need the sun anymore to see because of how bright Jesus will be. And so Jesus says, I know where I'm going. Not only was I the light, not only am I the light right now, but I always will be the light of the world. Amen. All the way to the end, when, we're, when all of this is over, I'm the light of the world. We won't even need the sun anymore because I will be the light of the world. And I just love this moment that traces this whole story throughout the whole Bible. And Jesus, he says, I get to say this and it gets to be true because I was the light, I am the light, and I always will be the light. We looked at one of the cool things about the name I am is what it means is it's, it's past, it's present, and it's future. He says, I am who I am. I have been who I have been. I will be who I will be. Amen. God is always, he's all the time. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world because I always have been and I always will be the light of the world. At the beginning, Jesus is the light. At the end, Jesus is the light. He's the light that we need. I love these moments in scripture where you get to trace the entire story. So Jesus absolutely is the light of the world. Right here, right now, he is the light of the world. But what that means, and what we said earlier, is that there is darkness. If Jesus is the light of the world, that's pushing up against darkness. So darkness is a reality for every single one of us. And we're going to talk in a moment here about darkness and how real it can get and how real it is all the time. One of the things I think we believe falsely is that darkness kind of creeps up in moments, but then kind of goes away. Like there was a moment where it got really dark, but now I'm fine. And that's just us, I think, experiencing the reality of darkness, but it is dark. There is darkness in our life all the time. Isaiah chapter nine, verse two, this is sort of a Christmas verse, but we're gonna read it because it's got some good points for us. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, the light will shine. So Isaiah is picking up on here. Everybody is walking in darkness and there's going to be a light that will come. That's Jesus. And it's going to shine in that darkness. But all of us are walking in darkness. So we need to realize the reality of what we live in and what we walk in every single day. We walk in that darkness. And again, I think it's challenging for us because of the way that we view our life, I think sometimes we 
have the idea that sometimes it's dark, sometimes it's better. But it's hard for us to get, get the picture, get the idea of what that darkness is. And every single one of us has, I'm sure, those moments where you felt how dark it was. And all of a sudden, like darkness showed you, this is how dark it really is. And it got real. Again, all of us, I think, are really good at convincing ourselves maybe that life is fine and everything's good. There's no problems. But then something happens and all that goes away. And we realize that there is real darkness. So we're going to get ready for our first little moment here where we turn off all the lights. So again, if you want to hop out, that's 100% fine. No problem. So we're going to turn the screens off um, because those actually give off a lot of light. So we're going to turn those off. And then we're going to do the house lights and the stage lights. And we're going to spend a moment here in the darkness. All right, here we go. Ooh. So darkness, I think, makes us feel all sorts of things. And it was really interesting after the first service talking to so many people that were like, so quickly, I wanted it, the light to come back on. You know, I was sitting in the darkness and all of a sudden that anxiety started to creep up or the fear that comes with darkness starts to creep up. All of those things start to happen. I think there's so many things that darkness will make us believe. Darkness makes us believe all sorts of lies. When we're in the dark, we're afraid. There's fear and the darkness is telling us you should be afraid because you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know what's around you. You don't know, like if, if you were to get up right now, you don't even know where to step or what's in front of you. There's a fear that comes with it. There's an anxiety. The darkness tells us you're, this is out of control. You can't control what's happening in here because you can't see. There's an anxiety. There's a weakness that we feel in the dark. And again, I just said that there's probably moments for every single one of us that we were reminded of how dark it can get. And I had a number of conversations this week with people who were kind of revisiting those moments and saying, yeah, when I lost this loved one, this parent or this friend, it was like, man, like the oxygen just kind of got sucked out of the room. It was so dark. And I realized how dark it kind of always is, but I'm just not aware. How much that darkness starts to affect you, how much you start to question things, how much you start to wonder about life when the darkness hits you so hard. There was a moment for me and my family, I have a, uh, a cousin whose um, 18 month old son, they thought was just sick. They took him to the doctor. It turns out he had a really aggressive cancer that they didn't know about. And it, it, you know, it was kind of one of those situations that went from zero to a hundred. And the conversation was just, we don't know what's gonna happen and whatever is gonna happen isn't gonna be good. They were saying there's kind of nothing else we can do. It was one of those moments. And I remember getting the phone call from my dad who talked to them saying, hey, this is happening. And it was like the, the feeling, we were driving, my wife and I, the feeling we had in that car was unlike anything I'd felt up to that point. It was so dark. Like we couldn't speak. It was just that moment where you're, you're kind of faced with, my gosh, this is so much. This is so intense. And thank God he's fine now, praise God. But that moment was so dark for our whole family. And every single one of us has had those moments. But the other thing that I talked about with all of these people in those darkest moments was the light that they saw from Jesus. And so Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And I think this picture right here is a picture of what's actually happening in our life. There is darkness and there is all of this stuff, but Jesus comes into that darkness. He says, I am the light of the world. And what the, the difference that one light makes is actually crazy. The difference that, okay, there's one spot where you can see. There's one place that I could go. I, I'm in darkness and I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to get through this, through this. But if there's a light that I can see, I can go there. And Jesus has an invitation to all of us. He says, I am the light of the world. And if you follow me, you will have the light that leads to life. You won't have to walk in the darkness. And this light from Jesus is in one place. He's the light of the world. There's not other places we can find that light. 
There's not other places we can go to. We're good at convincing ourselves that we can, but Jesus is the only light of the world. And so the, 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 the funny thing about this light, when there's one light in the room, that's where we all wanna go. And I, I know if I wanna know what to do, if I wanna know where to go, if I need to know anything, I've got to be as close to this as possible. And Jesus is inviting all of us, come close, follow me. And there's darkness all over, but if you're here, I'll show you what to do. I'll bring truth in the darkness. The lies that you maybe have believed, I'm gonna bring truth and correction, but you've gotta be here with me. You've got to follow me. I am the light of the world. If you wanted to do anything, you'd have to be as close to this light as possible. Everything with Jesus is about relationship. He, again, he doesn't give us a list of things to do. He says, come be with me. In a few weeks, we're gonna talk about where Jesus says, I am the vine. And I don't wanna to steal too much from that message, but what he's getting at is you've gotta be connected. We've gotta be close. That's what he wants for us. Jesus is always pointing us to relationship. And the secret is to be connected to him. Amen. Jesus is saying he is the light of the world. There is no other light. And the more that we spend time with him, the more that we spend time in that light, the more it shapes how we see things. The more that I spend time here in this light, the more that I can see, the more that it will change how I see. What's beautiful about spending time with Jesus and he's the light of the world, all of a sudden now that's the light that I'm seeing everything in. That's the light that I'm seeing myself in. That's the light that I'm seeing others in. That's the light I'm seeing my situations in. When maybe before when I was in darkness, the way I saw myself looked a certain way. Maybe it wasn't super positive and I thought I was worthless or nothing. Maybe the way that I saw others, I saw other people as frustrating or people that maybe, maybe I just like, I didn't wanna spend time with them. But now in the light of Jesus, I've got this compassion that I didn't have before. I thought my situation was just, you know, there was nothing to do and it was terrible and this is all terrible and awful. But now I see it in the light of Jesus because he's the light of the world. And I see how God's working in this situation and he's gonna bring something good out of what's happening. He's the light of the world and we see everything through his light when we are close to him. All right, we can turn the lights back on. Everybody brace yourselves. We'll do it slowly. There we go. Everybody okay? Great, good, good, good. There's so much that light does for us in the darkness. Again, I think there's so many lies that the darkness makes us believe. There's so many lies that it wants us to think are true. You should be afraid. Amen. You should feel out of control. You should feel anxious. That's all that's real and true in those moments. But Jesus comes along, he says, I'm the light of the world and he brings truth. One of the things I think the light brings in our life is what's real and what's true. You don't have to be afraid because I'm with you. Amen. You don't have to be afraid because I love you and I know what's best and I'm walking with you. You don't have to feel anxious because I'm, I'm gonna bring calm into your life and I'm gonna be with you and I'm gonna be that constant presence. You don't have to feel out of control because the truth is he's in control That's right. and I can let go and know that God's, under, God's got everything under control. Not I have to feel weak because I know I, I, the, the truth is I am weak, but he's strong. And I don't have to be afraid of my weakness, but I can boast in my weakness because of who he is. God's light brings truth into the darkness. When the light shines, we see what is true. There's so many things that darkness would make us believe. There's so many things we do believe about ourselves and about our life that Jesus wants to change. But we have to be close to the light and follow him. Another verse I want to look at where Jesus continues this idea of light and darkness, but gives a new sort of, uh, a new kind of perspective on it that is really good for us. This is John chapter three, verse 18 through 21. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to, come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. 
Jesus says, the light has come into the world, but so many people love the darkness because what happens in the dark is I get to hide and I get all the stuff that I'm ashamed about, all my brokenness and all my sin, I get to kind of keep it covered. And the moment the light starts to come, it's gonna expose that and I'm afraid of that. I, all of us can relate to that of like, I don't want God to know this about me. And so many of us struggle. We know God's real. We know God loves us and there's all of that reality, but we struggle to then actually believe that he'll forgive us all the way or that he'll love us if if he knew this thing about me, or if I showed him this piece of my life. And so many of us, we have people in our life and friendships that we just desperately are trying to hide things from these people. There's like, we're just thinking there's no way that they would love me or they would accept me or they would invite me into their life if they knew this about me. In the darkness, we get to hide. We get to cover up and we're afraid that the light is gonna expose but we're going to go to four points here. I think that we need to know about the light, four things that are helpful for us. And the first one is to want the light of life. We should want the light in our life. There is a beauty and a good thing that happens when we can show God all of our stuff. And we say, oh God, here's all of it. And I'm inviting that light in because that's the only way God can bring healing and correction and can fix what is broken. Is if I go, okay, God, here it all is. Here is all my brokenness. I want that life. I want that light for me. The prayer that I kind of have for this is, God, I want you to be bigger and I want me to be smaller. Amen. I want more of you. And so bring your light and I'm gonna give you all my stuff and I want you to take away what I don't need. I want you to get rid of the brokenness that I have. And I'm actually fine to just give it to you and show it to you. Because I know you're not just gonna be angry, but you're going to love me. And I was thinking about this with my kids. I've got two kids, they're um, six and three. And they do what every kid does when they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing. There's this immediate, like I'm hiding what I was doing. Like they're playing with something they're not supposed to play. And I walk in the room and they're like, what's up? What are you doing? What are you doing? Nothing, you know? Or they're yelling in their room and I'll walk in. I'll be like, hey, were you yelling at your sister? And he'll be like, yelling. I don't think I've ever heard that word before. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Doesn't sound like something I'd ever do though. But um, anyway, have a great day. You're just like, I, you're, just, you're just covering it up, you know? I know what you're doing. Or like, this one always gets me when they're eating something they shouldn't eat. Like I've asked them, they're like, hey, can I have this candy? And I'm like, no. And then I come back in the room later and they're like, mm -hmm. I'm like, what's in your mouth? They're like, mm -hmm. You're like, okay, you're just, you're, you're covering it up. But that's what we all look like, I think, all the time. With God, we're just like, oh, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, nah. Nothing. Don't worry about it, you know? We're, we're, we're afraid, we're ashamed, and we're hiding all our stuff from him, from each other. But there's a beauty that happens when we let the light in and we say, okay, here's all the stuff. I want to be loved for be, just being me. And God loves me for me. And he's gonna change me. He's gonna do all sorts of things, but I've got to first say, here it all is. Amen. And I want relationships in my life with each of you that are like that. I want to be honest about the things I struggle with and the places that I'm falling short because that's how we're going to grow together. I'm not going to hide my stuff. I'm going to let the light in. We should want the light in our life. That's point number one. The second point that's important for us, Jesus is the only light. That's right. He is the only light. I think a lot of us have, and we probably don't think about it like this, but I think we live like there's a bunch of counterfeit lights out there. There's a bunch of other things that if I'm honest, that's what I'm kind of wanting to illuminate what I see. That's what I'm wanting to show me what to do. For a lot of us, politicians are the light of the world. Think about in our world today, so many people put all their hope in that. Like, I want you to show us what to do. I want you to lead us. I want you to bring truth. I want you to bring correction. It's all on this person. Yes. Okay, you're the light of the world. They're not the light of the world. Like are, are, your spouse isn't the light of the world this person in my life that I love and oh my gosh, they've, they complete me. They do all these wonderful things and they're showing me all this. Like, That's wonderful, but they're not the light of the world. They're not, your kids aren't the light of the world. Your job isn't the light of you, the, you, you know, the world. Your money's not the light of the world. Amen. Like, what do I want to get close to? What do I want to lead me? What do I want to guide me? For so many of us, that's money. That's what I want to be close to. That's what I want to show me what to do. That's what I want to bring hope and bring correction and bring truth into my life. Money's not the light of the world. There's one light and it is Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the light of the world. He always has been, he is, and he always will be. 
And there's a beauty in trusting Jesus. There's a good thing in following him. He is the only real light. He's gonna be the only one that shows you what's true, what's real, what's right. Follow him because he's the only light. Third point, if you follow him, you will have him. This is one of the promises of Jesus. It's all about relationship. And if you're close, if you walk with me, if you study, if you're with me, if you pray, if you keep me you know, in your thoughts, if you're with me and follow me, you will have me. Get as close as possible to Jesus. That's one of the biggest things from this whole message, this whole idea that's been speaking to me all week. Get as close as possible to him. I'm not trying to follow a set of rules or carry out these certain things in the certain or the exact right way, but I'm trying to just follow Jesus. If he's the light of the world and the only way to have that light is to walk with him, then that's what I need to do. And I need to let go of, I think, my desire to have a formula to know exactly what to do and go, okay, I just need to walk with him. He is the light of the world. And if I follow him, I will have him. I need to walk with him and know that he is God. And the fourth thing for us, the last thing, is that we need to be the light. Be the light. What's really cool about this whole thing is Jesus says, I am the light of the world. There's no other I am statements where Jesus turns around and then says, you are. Jesus never says, you're the bread of life, or you are the vine, or you are the gate. Jesus does say to his followers, you are the light of the world. He's saying, Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. I'm the one that's bringing truth and bringing guidance and bringing direction to everything. And if you follow me, you have that light. So he's saying, now you're the light of the world. So you go out in the world that is dark and you are gonna be the light in that darkness for others. Not, Not your own light, not because you're so great, but because you are following me and you spent time with me. And I've got another verse for us. It's not on the screens because I found it about 30 minutes ago. So this is Jesus talking again to his disciples. He says this, this is John chapter 12, uh, verse 35 and 36. So Jesus said to them, the light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. It's like this idea that he's going, if you spend time with me and you walk with me and you follow, you become part of the family of light. I'm giving you my light. The things that God brings into our life, the light that he gives, he's giving to us to give to others. And I was talking with people after the first service, what does that light look like? People, when somebody forgives you, you're like, man, that's, that's light. Amen. When somebody encourages you in a time where you're weak, that's light. Because those are things we've experienced from Jesus. That's how we felt him be the light of the world to us. We were forgiven. We were encouraged. We were shown what to do. And the moment I can do that for somebody else, because of what he's done for me, now I'm being the light of the world to others. And you're being the light of the world. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. Saying, let your light shine. Don't hide it. Don't be embarrassed by it. Don't be that person that somebody goes years later, I didn't even know they were Christian. That's crazy. Don't be that person. Let your light shine. Don't hide it. And again, it's not, about, it's not about you. That verse is super clear that others would see how good God is, that others would praise him, not you. You're shining his light, not your light, but you are the light of the world. Jesus knows the world is full of darkness. And he knows that he's the light of the world, but also he knows if I can get the church to gather and follow me, and they all become these little lights out in their world and in their community and in their family, That's how we push back the darkness. That's how we do it. So one more time, we're gonna turn off all the lights. And I want everybody to grab their phones really quick. I think you all know where this is going. Get your phones out. We're gonna turn the lights off. So Jesus says, he's the light of the world. 
Anyone who walks with him will not have to walk in darkness. If you walk with him, you have his light. And if you follow him, you will have the light that leads to life. And if you experience Jesus' forgiveness and his grace and his goodness in your life, and then you start to share that to others, you become the light of the world. And so everybody turn on your flashlights on your phones for a moment. Yeah. This is what it can be. This is the picture. Every single one of us with our light shining in the darkness. This is what Jesus has done for me and I'm gonna share it with you. This is how I'm gonna be forgiveness to the people in my life. This is how I'm gonna be encouraging to the people in my life. This is how I'm gonna show what God's love looks like. And the more that we all do that, the more that all of us are the light of the world and we can push back the darkness together. Jesus is the light of the world and we, if we follow Jesus, are the light of the world. And one of the things I believe to my core is that God's plan A for changing the world is the church. That's how he wants to do it, is us, the community of people, of believers gathered together. He's saying the way you're gonna do that is everybody needs to be a light. Everybody needs to go out into their community, into their world, their friendships, their family, and be a light for me. Show others what I'm like. And in a world that is so dark, the more we do this, the more we will push back that darkness for others. Let's stand. We're going to pray together. <coughs> Jesus, we love you. And God, we're so thankful that you are the light of the world. God, I thank you that in the midst of so much darkness, in the midst of so much brokenness, God, that you shine so bright. God, I pray all of us would run to you. All of us, God, would, would choose to want to be as close as possible to that light to follow you, Jesus. I thank you for the promise in scripture, God, that if you follow me, you will have the light that leads to life. So God, help us to be people that follow, people that get close, people that learn from you. We want to follow you, Jesus. And God, for all of us in this room, God, and watching online, God, help us to be the light of the world. Help us, God, to not hide our light under a basket, but God, to make it plain and clear for everyone to see who's looking at us. The way that we speak to people, the way that we forgive, the way that we show grace, the way that we love, the way that we're generous, God, all of those pieces of our life. God, show us how we can be the light of the world. Help us to see the darkness that's around us, God, and to enter into it. God, we don't wanna believe the lies that the darkness teaches us. We wanna know the truth that your light shows us. We wanna be that truth. Help us be the light of the world. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your love for us, your forgiveness. God, we rest in the truth of who you are and what you do for us every single day. And God, we thank you for your light in our life that is pushing back the darkness. Pray this in Jesus' name, amen.